it going, everybody? Welcome to today's live stream. I'm Jake Parker, and uh, I like to draw spaceships, robots, comics, things like that. Um, and I'm glad you guys could all uh, join me here today. So let's do a um, kind of a state of the state of the Kickstarter report really quick. Switch over to here. Kickstarter has crossed the uh, fifty thousand uh, fifty thousand in funding threshold. So I think that's a huge. Um, that's just it's got sixteen days to go, and it's crossed that that fifty thousand dollar mark, which um, has delighted me in that my goal was to outdo or or to at least match drawings five. Um, and Drawings 5 was a 1,200 backer uh, Kickstarter and just barely crossed the, the 50,000. So, so it was, it's good that it's, it's there, and I'm impressed and, and excited that people are resonating with, uh, that this resonates with people. So that's, that's cool. I think it helps that it's a, um, it's a very, it's like, if you like spaceships, then you 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 know you're gonna want a book like this. Like, what good spaceship loving fan would say no to something like this? So, I think that helps this Kickstarter. Um, and then what else has been helping is these original uh, art pieces that I've been putting up every few days. So I'm just happy that people are into that. And as soon as I put them up, somebody adjusts their pledge and 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 get and snatches them up or they they pledge right away so tomorrow i'll be doing these guys at about noon no no nine i guess it'll be noon east coast time and it'll be nine o'clock pacific time which is where we're at right now we're actually mountain standard but it's the same as pacific right now so hi everybody welcome to the live stream good to see you we've got on the chat, pizza sauce. We got Benjamin and Eric. Deadless doggy. I like that. Is that um, does that go? Do all dogs go to heaven? Is that is that a reference to that? <laughs> and uh, anyways, it's good to see you all. Um, also have here. This is just a test printout of one of the the uh, the layouts of one of the pages, and I was just checking to see if the font was the right size was a, a legible size. So um, this is an example of what one of these pages will look like in the uh, in the Kickstarter. So that's good. So I want to try um, I want to try doing a another uh, poll with you guys. Um, and so what we're going to do here is I want to ask you all a question. Um, and just going to pull it up right here. We've got two classic um, spaceships here, the X-Wings, the T-65 and the T-70. And the 65 is the classic one that, that's from Star Wars, um, the original Star Wars trilogy. And we've got the T-70, which is the newer, the newer one from the newer, um, um, the newer, Star Wars shows. So I'm going to run a poll and I just want to ask you guys, because I'm curious, which one do you like better? I asked my friend Cole which one he liked better. I knew what his answer was going to be, but I want to know what, um, which, which one you guys like better. So let me write out this poll. Which one is a better design? Okay. And um, T70 versus... T65. And let's see. The poll's there. Put down your sandwich and uh, and uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, and just a, re a reminder so that you guys know which one is which, I'll just write it on here. So this is the, oops, there we go, T65. And here we have the T70. And I will not tell you which one I like better. 
because I do not want to sway the votes. But I'm really curious what you guys think. I was watching the intro to um, episode eight, which um, has a lot of T70 action at the beginning. I thought that was super cool to, to see some of that. The old one is the T65. So it's this one. It's the one Luke Luke flew in the original. So I'm just curious. I want to see what see what you guys think here. So we're looking at the I'm looking at the poll here. We've got 20 votes already. And I'm gonna run it for about 20 more seconds. But um if you if you like one or the other, um, just put in the chat what's one feature that you like about it, okay? And then uh, and then we'll move on. We got a, we got some drawing to do today that we got to get to, but I just wanted to ask you guys what you thought about this. Uh, and uh, okay, everybody, you can pick up your sandwiches now. I'm ending the poll, and the results are in. It's T70 gets most of the vote, 26 votes. I mean, the T65 gets most of the vote, 69% of it. So I'll personally, <clears throat> I'll tell you right now, I like the, um, I like the T70 better. Um, I think it's, it's, a, it's the, the, at first I was not sold on the design of the engines, but seeing that it was based off of an old Ralph McQuarrie painting from, the original like Star Wars paintings. Um, I thought that was cool that they were like honoring that original concept art. But then also, um, I just think it's neat that the wings kind of scissor together, which is which is really cool. At the end of the day, though, they're both awesome. They're both iconic and and they're great. So there we go. All right, what we're working on today is um, Avon's ship. She uh, she's the uh, one of the bounty hunters from Redshift Renegades, and her ship's going to be in this in this book that I'm making. And this it's not called the Raven. That's a placeholder. I actually don't have a name for her ship yet. So happy to take suggestions in there. So we're just going to put right here Avon's ship for now, and. Uh, and we'll come up with a name later. And I'm not sure if it should be something like named after an animal, like a cool animal, or if it's the, the little bird. That's cool. Mmm. That's yeah. That that's not a bad idea. Allison's here. You can. Hey everybody. Say hi. She we I, my microphone is very um, directional, so if if someone's not right behind it, it's hard to hear them. But she's over here making comments. If you can't hear them. Um, okay, so we're doing Avon ship, and I wanted to do a cutaway of it, but in order to do that, we have to do it from like a three-quarter top view. So I'm going to pull up, uh, I'm just going to have that on my other monitor. And this was like my initial sketch that I started working on. Um, I'm going to lighten it up and <clears throat> and uh, start just building in some structure here to make it make it a little bit more solid. Uh, before we get into any sort of final line work, but um, what what are people saying in the chat? They're just talking about the uh, the the pros and cons of the different X wings. Benjamin wants to know what you have to do or what they have to do to unlock the next stretch goal. Oh, okay. So the next stretch goal is um, I'm just gonna really quick pull up the browser again and. <clears throat> So the next stretch goal is a, a, a vinyl sticker. I changed the um, the layout of it. Allison's suggestion was it should be more like the the bookmark. So, um, so I went in and did that. Sixty k in funding. So it needs to raise about ten thousand more dollars, and it's getting about a thousand a day in funding. So we're ten. If we're at fifty thousand right now, fifty point five. Um, we're about 10 days away. If we can get that up to 1,500 a day, it, we, we can get it done in like seven, seven and a half days. So, um, so about a week. 
And I think all it takes really is finding those like word of mouth type of stuff, finding those people that you know in your life personally who are a fan of Star Wars, are a fan of, um, you know, classic 80s sci-fi, um, are a fan of any sort of like model building or, th- or things like that, or just world building in general, and say, hey, check out this Kickstarter and um, – you know, send them a text, call them, whatever, just say, look at this Kickstarter and I'll do the rest. You just get them a link to this Kickstarter. I'll handle the rest of it. Pizza Sauce, who is our official secretary, has marked down the number of backers right now. And <laughs> hopefully it changes before the end of this live stream. That's right. Let me switch back to, um, let me switch back to our... Oh, here's a good question. Somebody who backed at the, di- the digital book, mm-hmm. they don't get the stretch goals, right? Because they won't be paying shipping? Right. Yep. The whole point of getting a digital book is so that if you live in a country where it's cost prohibitive to, to be shipped to you or we can't ship it at all, you can still get a copy of the book. Right. That's the whole reason for, um, for that. So oh, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's bring it back over here. <clears throat> yep um, and I started doing that just because there was like I was losing tons of packages in certain countries um, and I it was f- time consuming and frustrating well and it was more expensive for instance to ship something to the Netherlands than the to buy the thing you were buying right the, sh- the shipping cost more than the item Correct. You, somebody's asking for a hint on the next stretch goal after that. Do you know what it is, or you just? I I do know what it is. It's a, it's the calendar, oh. and I've showed it on previous streams, but I can I can show it on this stream as well. Just start drawing. But we're <laughs> gonna we're gonna draw here first. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do here is is just the boxes. Get these boxes in the right proportions. And then uh, and then we could start breaking down the shapes uh, into more detail or more uh, um, accurate shapes to the um, to the ship. Benjamin says, call the name of the spaceship Her Majesty. Her Majesty. <laughs> the HMS. Avon's Raven. Somebody <coughs> suggested Avon's Raven. That was Robert. That would make sense, but uh, um, Missile Mouse's ship's called the Raven, so we can't have two Ravens. So when you're drawing a, a spaceship, um, Draw always draw through, especially for stuff like this, so that you know where things are going to line up on the other side where things are, are, are hidden. Okay, it's called drawing through, and um, and it just helps you. Um, it helps with the, the the landmarks of certain things so that you know. You know how things are going to fit together in this uh, in this three dimensionally. You know it. It wouldn't hurt to learn. 3D, uh, a 3D program like Blender, and to use that at this stage as well. Um, but I kind of like my spaceships tend to be just slightly wonky, just a little off, a little like kind of like Dr. Seuss stuff, where there's just a little bit of warpiness to them, and that comes from doing them by hand, and uh, and so. I think what that does is also gives a little bit of appeal. You could tell when something's like too rigidly uh, aligned to the uh, to the source material that it's like that you're drawing it from. So. Oh, Antonio, that was mean. He says he's watching from the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Now. <laughs> I wish I was there. Let's go find him. Wish I was there. Okay, so these are our two engines. Uh, engines. Pizza sauce. You'll find that Jake makes up lots of new words. Warpy. Warpy. That's a good one. 
Okay, we're going to draw this middle box here. Maybe even do it on another layer. <clears throat> okay, so this is the center line. The reason I want to be very careful with the structure of this is because this is going to be a cutaway drawing and if you are off even a little bit it's gonna it's gonna you know you could tell it's gonna really affect the design of it and you're, you're building this thing just like you're building a Um, a house you're gonna you know a lot of times artists amateur artists I'm, I'm seeing them adding details and light and shadow to stuff that doesn't have a good structure and I always compare that as like you know you're building a house and you start laying down the shingles and the brickwork and and the trim before you've built the foundation you know you gotta lay those um, two by fours down first before you do any of that stuff. Okay, a couple of questions. First of all, Tiger Shark points out you're only three backers away from a thousand. Woo! I like round numbers. Pizza Sauce wants to know what you do today. Um, today so far, I worked on the Kickstarter. You walked the dog. I walked. I walked the dog. I um, f figured out how to get from LaGuardia Airport to Penn Station um, because that's going to be something in my family's future, and I'd rather figure it out now than, <laughs> than on the day of. Um, and worked on the layout a little bit. You could see here. Um, I'll just switch this really quick. Worked on this stuff here, the layout for the for the Kickstarter, a little bit, and just kind of checking off things off my to do list. Hey, Lord Jen has a question, a good question. This was the same person who asked about digital um, orders and the mm -hmm. rewards. Um, can they get the people who digitally backed get a high res desktop background image of one of the cool stickers or a collage of the images or something like that? I will think about that. I don't. I don't see why not. We could we could do something like that. The other thing too is like, um, I some of these places I will ship to after the Kickstarter's over with. I just don't want to have to deal with shipping problems while I'm handling twelve hundred other yeah. orders at the same time. So if you have extras of some of the yeah, they'll be available in the shop. And if you're like in India or someplace, um, we can figure like yeah, we could figure that out. Would it be helpful to use perspective rulers or a grid for this? Yeah, I'm I'm eyeballing it, but if you yeah, if you don't feel good about your perspective, then absolutely like you know, you can make actually I'll show you guys how to make a grid really quick. So what you do is you get a, a line like that and then you duplicate it. And you move that line over. And then you take these two. We're going to group them so we can stay in there. You take those two, and you're going to move those two over. Now you have four. You're going to double those, and you got eight. You're going to move those over. You can just keep doing this. Um, it, it Because of a math principle, and I don't know what it is, but <laughs> things multiply very easily. <laughs> when you when you double them okay so now we've got a bunch of these now we're going to merge all these together um, you just hit command E and then we're gonna take this and distort it so that these lines and 
these lines match up. Actually, we're going to go like this. So we're distorting so all these lines match up. And now I have a one perspective grid to that side. So you can see me eyeballing it pretty close. You know, there it's a little bit off, but we're, we're getting there. And then we're going to do, we're just going to duplicate this and flip it vertically and horizontally. And wait. Okay. And now we've got perspective happening over here. We're going to... Um, We're just going to distort it as well so that these lines line up as well. A couple of questions while you're doing this. Yeah. Um, Jared is working on his own science fiction series, Galaxy in Conflict. Wants to know, does your book include capital ships like space battleships and starfighter carriers? Yeah, there's a section on warships. And so they're going to have, and in the warship section, there's um, everything from like fighters to bigger capital ships. Okay. But it's not a huge section. Two more backers to go. You're getting close. Right um, Lord Jen says the reason that he asked the question was he's from Denmark, and it's normally hard to ship larger things like books. Have you heard of an artist named Gary, how do you say that last name, Tonge? Tonge? Gary, Tom, no, I, I haven't. Okay. I haven't. I'll have to look him up. Oh, Baron B Burble. Almost to a thousand backers. Let's see if I can put it over. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's see here. Let's see here. We're going to go to um, browser time. Pull it up here. 998. Let's refresh. Let's refresh really quick. Hit the refresh button. I wish we had a um, trumpet or something or a mariachi band that we could that we could hire for the one thousand. You could play a song on your nose bird whistle. There we go. Nine ninety eight. So we've two away. Unless um, unless I didn't refresh it properly. Who's the one who's who's checking out? Pizza Sauce is our helper? No, yeah, Pizza Sauce is our secretary. <coughs> right our on. administrative assistant. Uh, Baron Burble is the one who said that. Cool. All right, so going back to these perspective lines, I want you, I want to point out you draw your your basic cube first. You draw that first so you know what where you want to be. And then you do the lines to match it up so you can line everything else up. Um, and, uh, and I think that's, that's, your, that's your key, your ticket to, to doing good, good perspective. So now I can go in here and see, okay, this line needs to be more like that. Just make sure these, these are all lined up a little bit better. One away. Who's going to be our 1,000th backer? Bits Factor says we can bump it up one. 1,000th one backer. Let's see who it is. <laughs> we'll do, we'll, uh, what we'll do here is we're going to say today's um, drawing is sponsored by Pizza Sauce. <laughs> I'm just going to do it right here. And then we'll put who was the, uh, who has backed it since? Baron Burble. Baron. We'll put a star next to Pizza Sauce for, for doing work. Baron gets a star. And Fitz Factor, once he comes back and says he did it, we'll put it, we'll put him up there as well. And this is not bad like at school. This is good. This is... <laughs> you made your name on the board a lot. Right. Kid, I, in, every once in a while. All right. Let's get back to 
our Cintiq here. Uh, okay, so we're, let me just show you. So what I'm doing now, when you look at this, is see how this is like angled. It's not a perfect square. Now I'm gonna start chiseling out of these squares, those shapes. Okay. So the center of this ship is gonna be about right there like that. And let me put on my grid again. I appreciate someone suggesting the grid thing. I, li I like to eyeball things, but you're making this drawing better by suggesting that. And you know what we're going to do here? We're just going to... We're going to put this over here so we can always be looking at it. Okay, so the center portion probably goes like that. And then we've got a we've got a um a way for it to have the center bridge on the back here on the top go like this. Okay, so now we know that our ship goes like this. Oh, Fitzfactor did it. Fitzfactor did it. 9099 plus you is that what that means? Is that does that mean you did it? Am I gonna write your name on here? <laughs> See you, Lord Van v Vengelin. Thanks for joining us. Thousand backers there. All right, we'll say it's Fitz. One, thousand. Okay. And then we're going to back, go back here and we're going to say it's something like that. Now that you can see here, it, it kind of turns in right there. So we're going to add that up here and have it get a little narrow right there like this. And then we've got two windows right there like that, window like that, and a big front window right here like that. He took one of your early sketches from two streams ago. Mm -hmm. Just finished turning it into a finished project. It was pretty cool, so he posted it on the Discord under the It's Finished section. Oh, cool. We'll have to pull that up a little bit later. Okay, so now we're going to figure out the this engine, engine part right here. Um... I think what we got, we, we're going to make our intake a little bit smaller than the square. And then there's a smaller square within that. Mm. There we go. So it would go like this. Okay, and then... Um, this part is going to come up here like that and then 
kind of trail down a little bit like that. Um, and then we have on the side here, side here, it's going to be like this. Well, you know what? I think this comes out even further. I think we're, we need to come in more. There we go. Yeah, that looks good. And then there's going to be like a, a bigger piece right there. And then this bottom part comes up like that. And this part kind of goes like that. So we're going to need to have it do something like that. I think, I think that's good, which means this um, fin is going to Hatch like that. I think we got ourselves a uh, an engine here. And then a smaller, thinner wing on the back here, like that. I'm not worried about panels right now. I'm just worried about um, uh, volume. Volume. Oh, it's on the same layer. Okay, so what you do is you just cut it and then you go to edit, paste special, and it'll paste it right in place there. Okay, let's, we're gonna, hold on. That's, that needs to go right there too. That's the problem when you, you start using a ton of layers. you lose track of what's what. Okay, just going to paste that in place. There we go. And we'll combine those layers, bring it down here. We'll turn off our grid. And we're going to make this thing smaller so it's not taking up so much real estate there. Okay, I think we've got ourselves a pretty good structure. We're just gonna work on this side here, and then we could start like cutting it apart. I'm thinking actually, I'm looking at this engine engine again. I think it needs to be higher, higher off the ground. Maybe not. Maybe it just needs to be a taller engine. We're gonna drop the opacity down on that one and make it Just draw over the top of it, make it a little bit taller. Blank page illo has a good question. Do you share your ideas for your next project with friends or family? I stopped sharing because they would tell me it's stupid or just too hard to do. How do you combat negative feedback? You never get negative feedback, <laughs> do you, Jake? Um, you, you know, if it's, a, if it's an idea that I really like, and I cannot handle um, negative feedback right away, I will choose who I share it with first. And I know I'll send it to a friend who 
will just be like, yeah, what, you know, that's cool. See where, see where you can go with that. Once I feel more confident about it, then I'll share it for like real feedback. And I want to, and I want to hear what, um, what people are, you know, are actually friends and family actually think about it. And, um, but you know, you have to do what's best for you and your like headspace to create, to create stuff. Um, but then you also don't want to like trick yourself into working something that really isn't viable. So you have to, you have to find that balance between the things. One thing though is like my mom, bless her heart, just liked anything that I I made, anything and everything. And um, you could do no wrong. I could in do her no eyes. do no wrong in her eyes, bless her heart. And she, uh, Jake was her absolute favorite. And. Um, <laughs> And so I stopped showing her my work for critiques because I knew she was going to like it, whether it was bad or not. And uh, I would still show her stuff that I worked on, but I wouldn't like, I wouldn't, you know, take it, um, take it for like a full critique, if that makes sense. Okay. All right, now we're going to just go in here and add some um, landing gear. The inspector says same with Venmo. I mean, you, and you should have a mom that like, you should have someone who's like a, a just a, a fan, right? Like a, a person in your life who you know just supports you regardless. But then you also have to have people in your life who are going to not like BS you and, and tell you. To succeed. Yeah. And tell you when you're you're off the mark or, or whatnot. Allison's, she's going to give me like what she really thinks, which is super helpful. Well, because m my livelihood depends on it just as much right. as your do yours does. Right. Do those need to come out a little bit farther? Maybe. Does that look right to you? I feel like they should come out farther. You're asking me. I'm the worst person. <laughs> And then we're going to draw the door open right here. Well, we're going to draw the door. Maybe we won't draw it open, but we'll draw that. <clears throat> it's got a little vent right there. Okay, I think I think this is I think this is pretty good. Hopefully. This says, yeah, I'm not upset. It's just not helpful for improvement. It's uplifting, though. Yeah. They, you know, I saw this video recently. It was posted over on the, the JP Discord, JP Central Discord. Um, and they said there's, it's the, um, uh, what's the word? It starts with a P. Um, when someone's in, close to you the proximity, proximity. that's right <laughs> it's the proximity principle in um in growing and, and learning and the proximity principle uh the, whoever came up with it i forget the guy who came up with it said there's five people you need to have within your proximity in order for you to to find success and the five people are one the they, they, they called them by different names but the, the professor is is one, this type of person. It doesn't have to be an actual professor. But um, what this person does, the professor, is they are your knowledge base. They know everything there is to know about the thing that you're trying to, trying to learn. Um, this person um, just has a good fundamental groundwork understanding of the thing. So if it's art, they know all the fundamentals of art, okay? The second person to have 
in within proximity is the professional. So this is a person who puts all of that knowledge into practice currently, right? So they know what's going on in the um, in the world of of the thing that you're learning as it as it applies to like actual practice. The third person you need in your proximity is the um, are your uh, peers and these are people who are like doing the same thing you're doing uh, they're learning from you you're learning from them um, and and usually like your peers are gonna f- be finding new solutions to problems or figuring out ways to to tackle new things like a lot, a lot of times your peers are the, the the cutting edge of things right because you you're bringing this new understanding to the stuff that you're learning and and a lot of times these peers are going to be people you know for the rest of your life i'm talking about college like college age um you guys are going to be around each other you're going to be giving each other you know passing on jobs and handing each other jobs stuff like that uh, and then the the third or the fourth person you need within your proximity is the what who are who's the, th- the fourth one I, no, I, I can't remember and then the fifth one is the um the producer and the producer is a person is who's more uh entrepreneurial in that particular space or a facilitator of some kind so they're the person who is hiring the professional who's putting together the uh the the group to accomplish the thing right and so it's good to have someone like that within your proximity and so i I think about that and how um when you're when you're an artist it really is you know any successes that you have are going to come oh the fourth one is the mentor okay so a mentor might be a professional might be a professor might be a um you know might be one of these other things but they they have an active interest in helping you succeed okay the professor just gives you knowledge the mentor can tell you hey uh, watch out for that that landmine you're about to walk on you know um so that's what it is so it's the professor the professional the mentor the peer and the producer and I, I just keep coming to that because it it really does make a lot of sense and and I think it holds water your peers are also going to be like champions for your work they're going to be there to like you know, when you got to complain about stuff or when you have success, you know, they're going to be happy for you and you're going to support them and be happy on their successes and stuff like that. You got to have those types, types of people in your circle. taking classes through SVS, but thinking of college. Any recommendations, preferably online, as I'm a single parent? Um, online, college. Hmm. We are the wrong people to ask for that. Yeah. But who would know? Who would know? Who would know? Um, I would ask, ask Lee White, actually. Go ask Lee White. He knows, and, or Will Terry, but I think, I, I feel like Lee's a little bit more dialed in to just in the, some of the people that he personally knows um, about uh, who's doing college, who, who's teaching good online, like remote college learning type of stuff. SVS is, is really good as a, a supplement, but... Um, I think where SVS sometimes lacks is um, finding that peer group that you can work with. 
you know, when you're signed up for a college and you've got a professor who knows your name and you've got students who know who you are and you guys are meeting, you know, frequently, it's just a really, it's a really good situation. Sometimes the reason we made SVS is because not everybody has access to that. And we, we just know really good ways to teach people <laughs> and, and we want to pass on that knowledge to people. I was trying to sketch, but my cat is getting in the way. I miss our cats. I know. I saw a cat this morning on the walk that I swear was Minnie. I took a few pictures. Our cat ran off. Cats. Our, both of our cats ran off a few years ago. It was horrible. And we know one of them got adopted. Can, can I tell that story? Okay, so we had these two outdoor cats in the last state that we lived in. And they were great cats. They killed varmints and left them on our doorstep. And they they were just really nice. We didn't, I'm allergic, so we didn't have them in the house much. But the dog got along with them when they did sneak in. We had chickens. And oh, yeah, we had chickens. And so because and of the chicken food, yeah, the Cats would help control the mice that would come to eat the chicken food. Anyway, it was kind of like the old lady who swallowed the fly. And the... Yeah. Anyway, so we had these two cats, and they were great. And um, we had rescued them. They were great mousers. We fed them. We worried about them in the winter, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I talked to our vet about how to move them down here to Arizona and get them to still be outside cats, but stay with us. And so I got all this advice. We moved and I left a neighbor in charge of feeding them there and petting them. Like everybody knew they were our cats and they little kids would get to pet them and stuff. We go back up later, like six weeks later to get Jake's um, office stuff, all of his studio stuff and move it down. And we got the cats. We caught them in a cat carrier, brought them down in the moving van and Brought him into the house. You say brought him down in the moving van. Like, no big deal. <laughs> I flew down. Jake and our oldest drove a moving van with two cats and a cat carrier by their feet. In making the cab. In the cab with them making horrible sad noises. It was fine for me, actually. It wasn't that bad. Anyway, we get down here. We had a whole... We, one of our bathrooms we had set up for the cats. We had, you know, cat food and litter. They had never really used a litter box, but they... They did fine in there for about a week. And we would go in almost every hour. We would send one of our family in to go pet them and feed them things and whatever. Then we moved them to a bedroom that nobody was using at the time. And they had free reign of the bedroom. They could look out the windows and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, so then the vet had said, then let them have free reign of the house. That way they can kind of see what they want to avoid and what they don't for a couple of days before you put them outside. So we did all this. It all went perfectly fine until, oh, and and he said, put them outside at night when they're most active so they can explore and then let them back in. So we put them outside. We have these two glass doors at the back door. I can't even talk about this. Tate and I put them outside (laughs) and they both turned right around. I closed the door. They turned right around and they were like pawing at the doors and meowing like let us in let us in let us in and they kept looking behind them to see what was behind them and meowing and pawing at the door and it was all I could do not to let them in and I thought okay I'm gonna wait five more minutes and then let them in and five minutes passed and they were gone and they were gone gone anyway so we walked around the neighborhood we put out food we looked everywhere for them and about a month and a half later, we were on a bike ride. We were still calling them. Somebody said prison break. And we were just calling them. We were driving, riding our bikes and saying, Moose Kitty. Anyway, this lady in the neighborhood said, oh, are you looking for your cat? And I said, yeah, it's the their brother and sister cat. The one is yellow with a white chest. And she said, oh, oh, no. I thought it was a homeless cat. She showed me a picture and it was the same cat. He had like the same scars. She said, I, I took him to the vet. And, and the vet said, well, seeing as how he's neutered and has a collar on and he looks super duper healthy and he's only a few years old, I think this is someone's cat. You should put it back. And the lady then took it to a shelter and gave it to them and they adopted it out to some old lady who named it Pumpkin. Mm. 
Yeah. And that's all I know. And I couldn't ever, the shelter wouldn't give me the information of the lady or anything. So now Moose is pumpkin and lives in some old lady's house. Minnie, I think, is running a crime ring in our neighborhood because we see her every once in a while. She'll sort of come toward us, and then she's like, no. I, she remembers what we did to her, and then she leaves. She won't let us come near her, but we've seen her several times in the last three years. Yeah. And that's why we don't have cats mm-hmm. ever, ever, ever again. Those poor cats. Now your shark thinks they went back on their own to Utah. That'd be awesome. Oh, what? So I guess what's the lesson from that story? Don't move. <laughs> I mean, we had a collar on them both, so it's not yeah. like... We could. I was gonna say, put a sign on them. I'm a happy outside cat, but that's kind of what the collar means. Right. <laughs> and now we have some cat sneaking in our garage every night, and getting into the bucket of dog food and eating it, and leaving little bits of cat fur behind. And I, I'm hoping it's Minnie. We should get an animal cam. Just see who's sneaking into yeah. the garage. Watch, it's a raccoon. <laughs> we should do a comic about that story. We feel <laughs> sad. That actually would be a fun That's comic. That's the back story and to the villain who is now Minnie. <laughs> Her brother Moose, who is now Pumpkin, becomes the good guy, and they end up meeting and fighting again one day. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Benjamin's cat, the one on his profile profile picture, just died a few weeks ago. Her name was Nacho. No, oh, that's I'm a so cute sorry. name. Did how old was Nacho? Nacho business. That was funny. Hey, they are home. Hey, we're in here. Oh, his cat was only three years old. Oh, too young. just gonna fix a couple of these things is that Lucy that was Calvin just now yeah. our 18 year old takes her 12 and 13 year old brother and sister to the public pool to practice swim team skills mm-hmm. three times a week it's great little concerned about the back here that it doesn't look dynamic enough we're talking about moose and minnie dad's gonna do a comic minnie's the bad guy who became a mob boss in the neighborhood (laughs) and moose is the good guy (laughs) benjamin says minnie's a villain haunted by her past and now leads a gang but she still feels a pull to her owners yeah her long-lost brother is now a distinguished gentleman 
I have no doubt Minnie would eat us if we died. Oh. No doubt whatsoever. <laughs> We have several people who want to read this comic now. <laughs> this is also a weird spot, too. I think I think I'd do that. Yeah, that, that seems more like it. And I'm wondering if it needs to be just more narrow at the top. This is one of those where it really would be handy to... I learned how to 3D model, then I forgot. Hey, is this going to be a cutaway? Uh-huh. Yeah. But I want to do the outside first so that I can know what I'm cutting away from, you know? Um, that wasn't a, a crit criticism. Somebody asked. Oh. Um, is Tiger Shark wants to know, what are your thoughts on Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix? I haven't seen it. I don't actually have Netflix, so lots of people are now judging you. For yeah, I know. Netflix. It. I saw the trailer. It looks really cool, and I've heard it's amazing, um, but I haven't. I haven't seen it. I've like all of my time these days is. Um, I'm not a good example, maybe not the best example right now of work-life balance. Um, so all of my time is going to making this book and and making sure it like... But you go through like seasons uh, because you're self-employed. Yeah, that's true. You that's go true. through, usually you go with us to my grandmother's house every summer for like mm -hmm. three weeks and don't work the whole time. Right. Yeah, I, I guess you're, you're right. Like some years... There's a lot more work. Some years there's a lot less. And when you have the work available, you do it so that you can take a break. That's right. Have you read or heard of Craig Allenson Columbus Day books? I haven't. What what are they about? I'm I'm curious. I did start listening to Artemides um, last night while I was drawing, and that is Andy Weir's second book after the martian and it's about um a moon base stuff that's going on at a moon base i think that i think this is good this is good We'll draw a shadow underneath it. And now we can like cut away. Um, let me hit save on this really quick. Hmm. What was the name of that pizza? New pizza shop that Craig told us about. I just suddenly want pizza. <laughs> Sorry. You have to call Craig and ask him. Um, uh, Ruthermani said, just watched the Mitchells versus Machines last week for the first time. Somebody likes the slight bend on the roof of the spaceship. Um, Brian asks... What sort of decision-making process do you apply when determining how to divide up hull panels? Mm -hmm. Is it just a negative space consideration or something else? Um, I, that's actually a good question. I want to say it's it has a lot to do with, I think, applying, again, the 70-30 rule. 70-30. Um, 
percent. And although it's kind of even in in places there, it did, yeah, you're asking me a question I that I haven't really thought about a full answer for that yet. Because I do a lot of gut stuff, but I'm, I'm trying to check what, what my gut says. You want panels that, lines that um, define the, the shape of it vertically, and then also lines that define the shape on the z-axis. So we've got the x-axis, the y-axis, the z-axis, and you just want lines that kind of uh, accentuate those to help them feel more 3D. So anything that you can do to show like this is how this shape looks in in 3D and this is how we're wrapping wrapping it around. It's going to help um, it's going to help make it seem a little more realistic, I think. Maybe not realistic. It's going to help it feel more dimensional. Structural. That's the word I'm looking for. All right. Does this look right? Looks good to me. Let's start cutting it away now. Should we do that? Oh, Brian, you make a good point. I always get stuck asking myself on what would the manufacturer want to re 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 uh, reproduce and fit on the chassis. And that's a... When you're drawing any sort of robot or machine or anything, always be thinking, how would this be manufactured? How would this be manufactured? Um, and uh, and that's where you get into very believable stuff. In fact, let's go over to, I'm gonna show you something really quick. Let's, let's go over to the, the sketchbook desk. I'm gonna switch to our wide angle here. And this book right here is like one of my favorite, favorite books. Um, the Great Book of Modern Warplanes. 1,000 artworks, diagrams, and photographs. And the reason I keep this book is because of... Let me show you that the F-16 is a good example. Um, the Hornet. There's a great example in here of kind of what I'm talking about and what helps you when you're um, when you're creating spaceships or any sort of vehicle. Um, let's see here. First off, it has <laughs> this is a huge book, so bear with me. But it's got this like. This is the Lantern Navigation Pod, and it just breaks it apart, shows you what all the different components are. I love that kind of stuff. Um, but I need a bigger space here. Okay, there's, um, there's a section here about manufacturing. And, um, but check this out. This is a great thing to look at each one of these it's got like 20 airplanes in here jets in here each one of them has this and so you're looking you could see all of the structural support stuff you could see how the interior workings are each one of these struts has is a is a contact point for something to access it um all of these things you know, you think about, there's a machine gun, right? Well, how do they load the bullets in? How do they repair the machine gun? We have this little pan in here, number 50. I'm going to find it over here. Um, fuel tank bay access panel. Fuel tank bay access panel, right? And so if you look over on this page right here, it says here, F-16 maintenance is facilitated by provision of, the provision of 228 access panels. Okay, so all of these panels come off so they can get back in there and fix something and work on something. And so when you're designing a spaceship, you've got to think, well, how do we, how do we, you know, change the oil in this thing? How do we access this life support pump? You know, 
How do we, um, oh, this is the page I was looking for. So this is um, a complete diagram of all the components that get built and put together, and they're all color-coded. This is an inc incredible diagram. They're color-coded by which um, company makes them. So black is Nordisk, uh, orange is Fokker, uh, green Sonica. We got Sabka, Perudsen, Fabrique National, Fabrique, Fabrique National. I think that's French, and uh, GD Fort Worth, right? And so this is General Dynamics, right? And so all these blue pieces, these are all made at one factory, and while those are getting made, they're attached to this middle section here. These green parts are getting put together. And you have to, like, this is what makes something believable. This is what makes your, your ship believable if you're thinking on this level when you're designing something. Like, you know, maybe this thing wasn't all built in one factory. Maybe it was built in multiple ones, and then there's one where it all comes together. You can see here, you know, them working on it and building it. These things are all practically handcrafted. <laughs> That's why they're so stinking expensive. Anyway, um, I hope that I hope that helps and answers some of your questions there, like how do you figure out what panels to put where and why and stuff like that. Pilfer Pup Draws asks if I've seen Top Gun yet. No, I haven't seen Top Gun yet. I haven't been to the movies yet this summer. I wanted to see Lightyear. I wanted to see Top Gun. I wanted to see Jurassic Park or World. And um, I, I just, I don't feel comfortable. This is, you want to hear how weird I am? We're going to like... I'm going to, this is a therapy session now, but I can't relax and go see a movie if there's like still work to be done. So once this Kickstarter's done and this book's delivered, then I feel like I can relax. We'll see. So, you know, there's some days or some weeks or years where I'm like, ah, oh, screw it. I'm just going to relax all the time. <laughs> and I've been doing that. Uh, I've used the, you know, pandemic and lockdown as an excuse to like not do things. And now I'm sort of paying for it and I have to, I have to be better about, um, I have to be better about, uh, working on stuff and getting stuff finished really quick before we get back to this. I just want to check, uh, let's just check the Kickstarter and see how we're doing there. Uh, we are at. An even 1,000 backers, but let me um, let me refresh this. Let me refresh this page. We'll see if it's 1,001. Has anybody backed it? Well, okay, we're still at even 1,000. I'll take it. I'll take it. 50,000. If you haven't checked out my Kickstarter yet, I know we've got we've got a bunch of people. We have got almost 50 people here. And maybe most of you have backed it, but if you haven't and you like spaceships and you like the stuff that we're talking about, this book is for you. It stars Kepler, who runs a um, a, uh, a shipyard, Kepler Shipyards. He's been doing it for 50 years, and it's a part comic. So it starts out as a comic where he's like taking you through, like, here's how spaceships work. Here's what they do. And then we get into all this stuff like specifics. And I've categorized it into a bunch of different kinds of, of spaceships. So you got star runners, you've got um, star streamers, which are like bigger versions of star runners. Star runners are like kind of what Avon ship that we're working on today is. Then you have long haulers, um, you've got transports, you've got military vehicles. Um, and then we have like, I have a section on unconventional vehicles. Uh, when you back it at certain levels, you're going to get a pin. You're going to get these cool stickers. You're going to get this print set. Um, and those are all different things. And then check back. This is the only piece that hasn't sold. It's, it's this massive 18 by 22 sheet uh, comic page. Um, 
Um, but everything else is sold. Check back every day because I'm uploading artwork to to sell in there. And then when we hit our stretch goal of 60000 which should happen next Wednesday if everything goes right. Um, if, I should say, it'll happen next Wednesday if everybody does their part and just spreads the word on this Kickstarter. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do live streams. I'm going to put up new artwork. But I'm hoping the crew here, the crew of the of the Kepler spaceship is able to uh, is able to get the word out and just text friends, say, Hey, check out this Kickstarter. Um, and there we go. And then, yeah, you know how Kickstarter works. So we, we, uh, that's where we're at. So hopefully we can get one more backer by the end of the stream. Let's just check some of the, um, messages now pilfer pup says well seen it or not you're doing a great job at art and life i appreciate that i try really hard to make sure i spend time with my kids my family and and give them attention so at the end of the day like i know top gun maverick's going to be around um it's going to be here next year and my daughter who's going to college might not she might be <laughs> going somewhere else and i won't have any time with her so i'd rather spend i guess i could do both take her to the movies but whatever um deadless doggy says i remember back in high school we visited the aeroplex where they would build repair and test out certain airplanes oddly i remember a bit of how the plane's windshield should be once they were made. That's cool. I'd, I'd love to do that. Brian, thanks for coming in. Uh, thanks for joining us. Philip, hey, first time to watch while the stream is live. Great. I'm glad you could make it here, Philip. Um, he, uh, he says, I've been watching these in the Instagram stream a lot lately after the fact. Thanks for sharing your work. I, I uh, uh, And he says he thoroughly enjoyed his copy of Drawings 5. So thank you. Um, and then I will get to, someone's name is in Hebrew, and unfortunately I don't read, uh, is it, what's the, I don't know what the, what it's called. Is it called he, Hebrew? Whatever. I'll get to your question just section second. I just wanted to tell Philip, thank you for reading Drawings 5 and, uh, or for, for having it and joining us here. And I was doing, um, live streams on Instagram, um, but we like the people on YouTube better, so <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing them over here. All right. Um, oh, somebody else asking if you've seen Top Gun. I just talked about that. I thought it was great. <clears throat> yeah, Allison, Allison saw it. Here's Walter. Hey, Walter. You want to say hi? He's behind the microphone. There he is. He wants to join us. Okay, let's start cutting this thing apart. And I think we're going to just do it for another 15 minutes, and we'll call that good. But um, um, we're going to cut this apart. First, we'll do this and drop down that opacity. And then I'm just going to switch pen colors here. And what we're going to do is cut it right down the middle. Oh, Walter's now at my feet. He loves, this dog loves being... Um, he doesn't want to be petted. Doesn't want to be petted, but he wants to be by you. Okay, we're cutting it right down the middle here. And we're going to switch to this this pen so we really can can get an idea of of the line that we're making this is um i think in in uh star trek and star wars they have a thing called transparent alum or transparent titanium or transparent steel 
for the windshields and I guess it's really expensive. And so, um, so that's why it's only used sparingly, but, um, I'm thinking that's what they're using here for this as well. Okay. So, We're going to do like that. We're also going to cut um, this up like this. We're going to cut this engine in half as well. So we can see the, um, the top half of it. So let me switch back to this. At this point, I'm just going to like scribble some stuff here. Placeholder stuff, right? There's going to be like tubes and wires and support things and stuff like that. And then there's all kinds of like junk that's going to go in here. It's all placeholder. And then there's going to be a whole section, a whole slew of like life support and stuff back here like that. And the reason I drew the outside first is because there's going to be pieces that attach the outside. So there's a vent right there. So I want to make sure I have some sort of thing that attaches to that vent. Okay, so that's that. And then I know that the, um, her, the place where she lives is going to be this top area right here. Okay, so we're going to have that, but then there's going to be a little hatch back here where she goes down to the bottom so when to enter this thing you come in through the door there's a whole area under here and then you go up this ladder and then you're in her living space and the, the cockpit here so there's going to be a, a chair right there there's going to be um, her navigation the pedals stuff like that this is going to be lower and then her she's got a bed right here She's got a couch and like a snacks. table. Where does she keep snacks? She has a whole compartment system right up here where she keeps snacks. Is that enough room? Fridge. We'll do it. We'll figure it out. Yeah, and there's going to be like a kitchen back here. Um, flat screen TV. We'll do some stuff like that. And then... So we'll, we'll probably have the bed like that. And then we're going to carve out the bottom here. So um, Benjamin says he's turning another of your old sketches from the previous stream doing letter F, the circular one. Oh, cool. So we're going to want to have some space here for the avionics because those are all going to attach up to there like that. So we'll have space like that. Where we'll just see what all that stuff is. And then we're going to have a little space here for the landing gear to f fit. Uh, this is gonna be a tube I could tell what's going on I don't know if you guys can <laughs> but then we have this whole space under here um, where she can store stuff and carry things and maybe there's seats um, we probably need to fit in like a little 
commode or something and a sink. I don't think she needs a flat screen TV. She'll have a tablet or something. Yeah, she won't have a flat screen. We'll, we'll do something else there. Um, and then here there's going to be the ladder. And there's more storage and stuff like that. Are you trying to? Sorry, you I'm want trying to respond? Type your Instagram handle in there. Oh, okay. Here, I'll do it really quick. Did I spell it right? I don't know. Okay. It's just Jake Parker on Instagram. <laughs> um, Pilfer Pup says, "Do you?" Um, do you visualize characters like that too? Like their guts? Not usually. I mean, muscle muscle structure, bone oh, okay. structure. But, um, yeah. I mean, if you if you know how muscles and bones work, then you're thinking about that as you're drawing. You know, if you're drawing a character who's flexing versus relaxed, you're gonna you're gonna understand that the the shape of the muscle changes, um, depending on. On what they're what they're doing. What? Oh. <laughs> okay, so now they've got a good like um, idea here of what's gonna be underneath everything. We're gonna do the interior guts of that as well. We'll keep this just how it is. So now I've got this. Then I can go in and. You need to throw some funny things in there, too. Like you put chickens in space. Mm -hmm. in, uh, what's his name? Skull Chaser? Yeah, in his ship he had a secret chicken level. Yeah. you got to think of something. You don't have to do it now. I know. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Also, I need to make sure, like... I don't draw some things too big, too. So I should probably have Avon. For reference. This is the size of a human. She's basically flying a motorhome around. That's my dream. <laughs> yeah. Teddy bear or a book or something. That's good. That's good. So then, then what I do is I'll pull out my um, my airplane book. Um, I like those Star Wars cross section books too. I'll pull those out and just start looking at some of the shapes and the different pieces needed to um, um, to fill in all the all the pieces. You know, all the all the fill in all the gaps and everything. But I've got a pretty good idea of where where I want to go here. Next phase will be a structure phase. Um, and uh, other than that, I think I think we'll call it good for for today. Um, yeah. Thanks for joining us. Let's just take one last look at the um, one last look at the uh, Kickstarter. We started out at oh, we got a hundred and one. 101 or 1001 sorry <laughs> not 101 secret cinnamon roll storage center secret cinnamon rolls definitely yeah yep cinnamon rolls a sandwich slot for, for carrying your sandwich we got a thousand and one backers so thank you for for backing everybody who did special shout out to um uh, Baron and Fitz Factor for backing while on the stream and for Pizza Sauce for keeping track of everything. Um, and uh, thanks everybody. And we'll, I think we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up here. Oh, Pilfer Pub says we're about to get to 1002. Um, if that's you that's doing it, then I absolutely appreciate it, Pilfer Pub. Our assistant says we started at 996. Nine ninety six. So we've got so we got five, five backers. All right, that's 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 pretty great. 
All right, give me uh, give me an emoji if you liked what we did today, and if you want to see something like that again, and and then we'll we'll wrap it up. I want to just thank everybody for joining and for coming to these things. Um, I really really do appreciate it, and glad you guys were able to to catch it live, as well. So. Except for if someone's watching the recording of this, and then they're just gonna feel yeah. bad. Yeah. Well, and, and for you, <laughs> for you watching the recording, you made it to the end. You know, shout out to you as well. Oh, I was going to, we'll do one more question. So I was going to say, what do you think of inking traditionally versus digitally? I'm working on a new comic book. Me personally, I like to ink traditionally because when I ink digitally, I get too lost in detail. You can zoom in so close and it's it's dangerous. If, if you're going to do that, if you're going to ink digitally, like lock it at, you won't go any closer than 50% on your screen or 25% because you can zoom in and you can draw like all the little like eyelashes on a character and, and you're just not going to see that. Um, so, so that's one thing. It's just more efficient for me to ink traditionally. I'm more likely to let um, a wonky line slide and keep it so I can finish a page faster because I'm not over, you know, redoing and redoing control zing, control zing. And then I think the last benefit is, is I like to sell my original art. And, uh, and so it's just another revenue stream is I have an inked page that I can sell. And if you're going to, you know, show your work at you know, table at cons, or you've got an Etsy shop, or you've got, um, you know, an online shop or something like that, and you throw original art up there, it's just another way to, to make money. So I would look at it like that. I'm seeing a lot of emojis. You guys liked what we did today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Again, you guys, you guys are great. And we're going we're gonna to call it good for today. Bye, everybody. <laughs>